Well, welcome back to another video. This is a film photography special. If you've been following along for a while, like, and I buy a while, we're recording this in uh, August, August 1st, and we're back in the winter. We were in the desert, and I'd been wanting to try some film photography again. I've been doing, I only been doing digital since I seriously got into uh, photography, so I wanted to try something different. Melanie's sitting right beside me. She's off camera today. Um, that's why I looked over there. So I ordered this thing. This is a vintage Mamiya 35 millimeter film camera. Uh, 1972 or 1974, I believe, is what I looked up when I got it. It is fully manual. They're the closest thing it's got to automatic. It's supposed to have a light meter. The light meter doesn't work. So everything else is manual. Manual focus lens, all, all manual. You got to do it yourself. So I wanted the challenge and... We had no idea if it worked. So we just got the results back of our first set of film, our first roll of film. Had some technical problems the first time I tried to use it, and I kind of got away from it for a while. So we got it back, got it going. We're going to review those with you guys and share our perspective on it, and we'll see how that turned out. While we're uh, right now waiting, we literally got the film back today, August 1st. Our scans, we have our develop after we developed, we also have been playing with this one. This is a 100 plus year old Kodak Brownie number three. I think off the top of my head, I figured it's dated to like 1911 to 1917, if my memory's right. I, this was given to me by uh, Richard and uh, along with an old uh, um, Polaroid. And the Polaroid I cannot get film for anymore. It's an old land camera. This one, whole nother story. We had to get, uh, uh, find spools, film spools. We had to find adapters. We shot a roll of film through it last week. So that's going to be coming soon. Hang in for that. And we went to somewhere really cool to do it. So that's coming up. And if you're wondering, we're shooting through the 35, through the Mamiya 35 millimeter, we're shooting uh, Fuji film 400 speed. Why? Well, simply because we were in Parker, Arizona when the camera arrived. And this was the only 35 millimeter film we could find in all of Parker, Arizona. So that's why we're shooting this one. So without further ado, we're going to dive in. Melanie's joined me here, and we're going to look through all of 36 exposures. And I'll tell you, honestly, we'll see what Melanie thought. I thought half or more would be awful because it's all manual, and I hadn't shot film since on an automatic camera decades previously. What was your take, Melanie? I thought they came out really good. I thought the, the images were focused, and the lighting wasn't really that bad, so... Yeah, I was, I was impressed. Better than expected. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Number one, we were in the desert when we shot the first batch of these, and then we made it out to Wyoming, and then we went, finally went for a walk and shot the final ones just uh, a week or so ago. So here's the first one. This was the very first shot with this camera. We were camped literally right here, and I just thought this cactus was cool. Um, it didn't turn out bad lighting-wise. The sky's a little washed out. I didn't... Uh, a little bit busier than I, I'd hoped it would look a little cleaner, but... Hey, it was a cool scene anyway. What do you think? Yeah, I, I thought you could definitely tell that those cactus have some spiny uh, spines on them. And, and uh, this looks very deserty with the creosote and looks like probably an old Palo Verde tree. Maybe an ironwood. I don't know what that was. But a tree, that's very typical case. for, you know, those desert cactus to have a nursery tree that eventually dies as it gets older. So... Yeah, and you yeah, see the creosote and some other bushes around. And that's like Melanie said, we often see them in clusters where several things are growing at once. So kind of a cool uh, example of that there. And by the way, stay tuned to the end of this if you want to see the edits. Because I will run all these through Lightroom and see how if I, I'll see how it comes out uh, finally. And we'll also talk sure about the film lab we're using at the end as well. So stay tuned for that. And number two, uh, this one kind of overexposed, but it was a really cool cactus. We had moved uh, camps, and this we went for a walk and found this really cool. Actually, we saw it from camp, so we went for a walk and got a photo. This was sort of overexposed, but it's still kind of a cool, really impressive uh, swirl. I think I also have drone footage of this one, too. Yeah, this was really tall, and uh, I can't remember if this was early morning or evening when we went, but I thought the, the long shadows were kind of cool, and definitely it's it's... It's a little dark, but I think it has a certain dramatic, I don't know, ambiance about it. So She's being nice of... to me. 
has dramatic ambiance. <laughs> All right, this one, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think the other one's a little bit cool. This is the same cactus, literally like seconds or a minute or two apart. I, I don't know. I can't remember if I put a... Uh, like a polarizer filter on and here. That's what I was wondering. I don't this remember. One had the polarizer, or maybe the one before it had a polarizer. I should have taken notes. I meant to, and obviously I did not. Um, so I don't actually know what I did here or why it's so different. Maybe the sun came out from behind a cloud. I just don't even know. Yeah, but the creosote bushes kind of glow up in this one, so that was kind of neat. Yeah. All right. This one is just a close up of the same cactus because it's cool. So I got close to it and. Uh, Got a picture. Well, I was impressed by how much of the, like, even the spines and stuff you can see. So it's pretty good detail in here. Yeah, I also like how it, it's these little buds of, you know, future arms that are growing. It, despite, looks like the top was totally, uh, I don't know whether that's lightning or it just rotted off or what. But it's still still growing and still going on. So it's it's really cool to see those little little buds of little arms starting to go. And I think this is Melanie's, if my memory's right. I'm pretty sure this is the one she took. We had a short that we put on YouTube with her taking her first shot with the Mamiya. And I think this is the one. But again, since this spanned from like January until July, our memories could be fuzzy on some of the details. But clearly it's in the desert. Yeah, I like I, this one's a very clean kind of... Uh one and not so much uh, not so busy but you definitely uh, you can see all the arms the definition I wasn't sure if it was white in the middle section before the arms take off or, or whether that's an overexposure at that point I, <laughs> I was trying to understand what was going on exactly in that but it was yeah it, I came out much better than I thought absolutely <laughs> This is just the one I snapped in the house because I was, I was thinking things weren't working, so just took a quick picture in the in the trailer of our little bookshelf there. It still works, though. I mean, you can... It came out better than I thought, honestly. Things are in focus, and there is there is a, a very uh, a different lighting here. I mean, you get the lighting on some of the books and darkness on the other, and yeah. And we're back in Wyoming. Enough of that desert stuff. All right. <laughs> I, I was just messing around, brought the camera down to shoot some. I, I would. I didn't expect much of anything from kids' softball games, and it actually didn't turn out too bad. Uh, this is obviously I'm shooting through a fence here. I do that with the iPhone all the time, but the lens is a lot smaller, much bigger diameter <laughs> lens here, and I couldn't get the whole thing without getting the fence in it. But because of manual focus, no problem. The granddaughter's still in focus, and the fence is just blurred, so it worked out all right. And another one, this one, obviously, I shifted a little bit, and there she goes. She's going to drill it right over the fence. You can't see it because it's not video, but I promise you, it goes over the fence. Oh, I think we know who this is. Oh, there I am. <laughs> this is one of, we had two softball games going on at the same time, so I was trying to keep an eye on both of them at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> not easy. And in case you're wondering, I'm pretty sure I was wearing a t-shirt this night while Melanie's wearing several layers. And the pink hoodie she's wearing is a uh, Armed and Dangerous with Robert and Melanie hoodie. You can get those down below on the merch shelf uh, if you think they're cool. We might have some other merch coming soon. Melanie did the drawing and she's got some others in work. So if you like that stuff, check it out. Another little slugger going. And again, I, I'm honestly... I'm shooting this with film on a vintage camera. I got to meter the exposure and then I've got to adjust the focus and everything and get ready so when she swings, I can try and get a picture. And it came out better than I would have dared to hope, honestly. Right. There's a few different actions going on right now with the batter and, and coach in the back there uh, with his hat. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> and uh, so they're obviously moving, but it's not blurred at all. So definitely kept up with the speed. That coach is a son-in-law, so we can pick on him. <laughs> on his hat, so. And there she goes. Yeah. And I love this. This one's fun because you've got one in full speed there. Another one running from first to second. You've got action going on here with a opponent running for the ball. And the coach there up on the Little League. That's my yeah. daughter. So I can brag about her. 
Uh, so lots of action going on. And again, for shooting with an antique or well, vintage, at least film camera, all manual. I actually am fairly impressed yeah. with this shot. And and like you were saying, the fence is kind of blurred, which is which is really nice, simply because if you're with the digital, sometimes it cannot distinguish between focusing on the fence and focusing on your actual subject through the fence. So, oh, so the joys of manual. And, and yeah, and actually, I'd love to tell you guys that I framed this all on purpose. As you see the div the fence, <laughs> the chain link dividing the scene up. And I wish I could tell you that I framed it that well. But I do like that's how this one came out, considering. And another one. This one didn't turn out quite as good, but hey, you know. Another one taking a swing, that bat's in mid-swing there. Yeah, yeah, and the ball. You can see the ball on the right-hand side if you look. It's, yeah, the, it's ball, the ball's in motion there. Yellow, the orange kind of ball. Coming out of the window in the house. And, so, and it's not, I mean, it's it's a little bit maybe blurry, but not really that much at all. So it's like you kind of caught it in midair. So it's... Another one. Let's see. I think, I think this is a granddaughter playing the catcher, but, you know, it's hard to tell months later, so. <laughs> Anyways, Little League. <laughs> yeah, the color came out good. I love that green grass. I do like the color. I, we can't, we were trying to remember earlier if I had a polarizer on for these softball shot, shots, and I can't remember if I did or not. Yeah. But yeah, good color, and yeah, the red dirt, that's Wyoming. Yeah. I always thought of that as Virginia from where I lived there for a while when I was a kid, but we got red dirt here in Wyoming too. So. Yeah, yeah. And green grass because it was a, it was a wet spring, so. And one more from softball. Everybody's scrambling. Lots of action going on there. Not quite as good of a photo, but still, we're going through all 36, so some are better than others. This one, after the after that ball game, the sun, we were getting a lot of wildfire smoke coming from Canada. Thank you all, Canada, up there for sharing your smoke with us. Uh, we had a couple days of pretty smoky air, and the sky was just really cool, so we thought, what the heck, we'll get a few photos. A bit of lens flare going, um, but that's okay. Uh, we got a couple of red-winged blackbirds hanging out on the reeds, and basically, I, I really did not expect much out of these photos because they were kind of tricky, um, I thought, and so I was actually very pleased with how they turned out. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you had the polarizer on this one or not, but you definitely got that light on the rippled water, which is, I love that, always love that, and yeah, that smoky, smoky sun, that's definitely what it looks like, so, yeah. Well, we got a few more of these. Uh, this one, can you all guess whose that is in silhouette? <laughs> I think Melanie yeah. prefers being in silhouette to uh, being lit up like on the previous one. But a little incognito thing going there. But it made a great picture, I thought, and adds some interest to having uh, yeah. a human subject in it. Considering this was fairly low light, everything's pretty well defined. I was a little bit surprised at that. I thought things would be a little, a little grainier, more blurry, but seemed to and, pick it up. So, and if you look all in there um, a little bit closely, hopefully you can see them. There's a bunch of swallows buzzing all over the lake feeding, which was pretty cool. And we actually did capture some of those in this photo, this film photo. So. And another one, I was hoping for a little more lens flare here. Uh, didn't quite happen, but I don't know. It's still kind of cool. Yeah, a little park crunch. And another one, again, I was hoping for some lens flare here. I, I was trying for some lens flare. I guess I didn't uh, dial it in quite right. Um, but again, we got very limited settings on this thing um, in terms of what you can adjust because it's a vintage camera. You still so. get the highlight on the bridge, the wooden bridge. and Yeah, there's some nice glow off the bridge and everything. So yeah. off the frog yeah. and the bench. You know, so. <laughs> it came out okay. It just not, didn't quite have the lens flare I was hoping for. That's, that, that's me critiquing it as... To get, as someone who had a specific vision in mind for what I was trying to get, knowing that I was pushing my luck, shooting film on an antique camera, just learning how to use it. It's low light, but you still get some color. The, the greens still come out there, so. Oh, um, I, I don't know that I would have got this good of a picture with a digital with as much dynamic ranges as happening there. So yeah. I'm actually pretty happy with it. Yeah. And one more again. Uh, a little bit of lens flare here. I was going for more, and of course the tree is pretty dark. I figured this was a pretty tough shot. But. Yeah, definitely a tough shot. A little darker, but maybe when you get it post edit, you might be able to lighten that up. Yeah, we'll see what happens when I get this thing yeah. in the light room. So we got yeah. we got time to play with it still. 
Whew, here we go. Now, unfortunately, we start with a lens flare here or a, a light leak or something. Yeah, um, we've had that a little bit in a few of the others. But and you're going to see, yeah, you'll see that in some other ones on the right hand side. And this was the first time it really showed up. Now, the question, of course, is, is it like leaking around the back of the camera? I don't see any obvious problems with the foam seals. But <laughs> I mentioned technical problems. The, this, this camera uh, has two different shutter releases, one for fast shutter, one for slow shutter. First picture I tried to take, I was trying to use the light meter in the camera, which I later learned did not work, or at that time I learned did not work. I was trying a, a shutter speed that would have put it on low shutter, slow shutter, and the shutter just sticks open, sometimes for like minutes before it finally releases. So I didn't want to mess with trying to get that fixed until I was sure that the camera even took pictures. So now that it takes pictures, we may mess with that. Um, but as point of all that being trying to get it fixed, I opened the thing, I rewound the thing, opened it up, accidentally had rewound the film all the way into the canister. We had to mess around with that. We finally managed to extract the film back out from the canister. We may have messed it up. Or we may have damaged the film with the heat and everything. I don't know. It doesn't look to me exactly like a classic light leak from the back. Because it moves around in different pictures. It's not always there. Sometimes it's nothing at all. Other times it moves around. So if you've got a lot of experience in film photography and you've seen this kind of thing, let me know what you think in the comments because we're curious. But either way, we're shooting another roll of film through this and we'll see if it comes out the same or if maybe it was just this roll of film. So we're going to find out. But this is a cool uh, grain tower out in the middle of nowhere. I thought it'd be a cool picture and it probably would have been if it didn't have that big light leak smear streak across it. Yeah. It was more irregular. We called a lightning bolt or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but it's middle of nowhere, Wyoming, yeah. cool spot, so maybe we'll try it again. Yeah. And this was on our way back. I messed up the exposure on this, clearly. Uh, it's too bright. There was this crazy storm rolling in across the prairie. It was really neat looking. We have a, you know, the light leak or whatever it is again, um, but it's a little overexposed. But it was a cool sky, so we just pulled over on the side of the road and hopped out for a picture and tried really to frame it up interesting with the fence and everything. And yeah, but very typical Wyoming landscape. So it is, yeah. it is, yeah. Very much it's Eastern very Wyoming. Open right. and, yeah. So we'll see how this cleans up in uh, the Lightroom. This one is just my uh, daughter-in-law's horse. We were going out, that was the last one. This is So this is a few months later. We're going out to shoot something again to try and finish up with a roll of film. The horse was there, I thought, heck, I'll take a picture. This was really hard lighting additions, really harsh, bright light, very dark in the in the shed, and the horse was ignoring me because uh, he does that. I uh, I thought this would be far worse. I thought it would be really dark or really blown out. So the fact that it came out as good as it did is actually kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah. I think the, you have such a contrast, like you said, in light. So it, it, lighting, it's, it's pretty amazing. It came out as well as it did. But, yeah, that's the way he sleeps. He puts his head in the corner, and that's me. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Trailer's not very big. You always get your head stuck in a corner. But This one's kind of fun. It's pretty busy, almost chaotic, but I love the sunflowers and the other thistles and whatever all is growing there. I think a little sweet clover over on the, the left, the yellow yeah. there, and a light leak. Yeah, but, you know, light leak. We can just crop that out, right? Yeah, that's what I, you either going to crop that or, yeah. And this is just a random picture of a bridge at a college here in town. Uh, it's a cool bridge. We have another picture of it later on. Yeah. You'll see. But this is was just to take a picture. Because I really went out this day not with anything in mind, just to take some pictures. And, of course, we've got a bit of a light leak here, but it's not too bad on this image. Uh, on this one, there's along this multi-use path, we like to walk along a creek. There's some antique, very antique, much older than the camera antique abandoned cars that are rusted out of there. I don't know what kind of models they were. There's at least parts of two of them yeah, for sure. I don't know if there's more. more. Pretty neat. But I just took a picture of it out there in the field. Yeah, it was pretty because all these thistles around and, and uh, they're all puffing out now. So If I was braver, I might have hiked out there to get a better picture, but there's lots of prickly brush. So Prickly brush, rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes. Yeah. I got a tick. Last time we were up in the big yeah, horns, so I'm a little paranoid now. Oh, yeah. And <clears throat> Melanie did not know I was taking this picture, or I would not have no, been able to take it. No, I did not. <laughs> That's all 
Right. Enough said on that one. Okay. This one, look at the light lens flare, right? Or the light flare, the light leak. Whatever's going on here. This one's really bad. But they do hop around. Like I said, they shift around a bit and they're sometimes not at all, sometimes subtle. So I don't know. I'm, I'm really wondering if we didn't mess up the film. But yeah, we're going to find out because we're going to do it again. Really looks like a Star Trek beam me up kind of thing. Going That's what we should have gone with. Now you, now yeah. she brings it up. I could have yeah. been doing that all along yeah. and trying to save my, yeah, my yeah. pride here. <laughs> and another one, you know. But it's kind of kind of interesting other than the light leak. <laughs> I, I read earlier, by the way, I googled it, trying to look up light leaks a little more, and apparently you can buy a film that's pre-light leaked for special effects, so, I don't know. Oh, there she is again. Yeah, I, I took a picture, I probably have this somewhere, of the thistles are all poofing out and getting Oh, seat. yes, yes. So, that might be an interesting They're blowing pollen there. all over the place. We got a little short we did of that. Yeah. The pollen blowing all they're, over. They're so soft looking, so... And this is so a, that was my little uh, digital camera your father gave me. That was, uh, it's an elf, I think, isn't it? Or something? I think so. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. So it actually doesn't do too bad on pictures. I was surprised. Yeah, I, I'm okay occasionally. Now, these days, I'll be like, all of a sudden, there's a flash. I'm like, what? Oh, she's paying me back. I'm getting, I'm getting <laughs> photographed randomly and unexpectedly. <laughs> candidly, candidly, yeah. This one, I actually, I, I'm bummed about the light leak on this one um i did this close up of this thistle and i thought wow i'm never gonna nail this because of the focus and all the you know the manual adjustments and everything and it actually didn't turn out bad these ones this day by the way guys all these ones see now that this from this last set i did have a polarizer on to try and help with a it was so bright and trying to make hopefully make the things a little more vibrant and it you know, turned out okay. So yeah, I, I thought the colors were pretty good, and and you definitely can see the definition of the leaves. And, Pr pretty good detail for film yeah, and yeah, an antique means. camera. So yeah, you knew what to focus on. You you had the focus right on the subject, and the back kind of blurred out. So it, yeah. And one of the reasons, by the way, you know, people like antique lenses like this. People buy antique lenses like this, vintage lenses, with an adapter, put them on their mirrorless cameras. Why? Because they're not perfect. They're not tack sharp, perfect sharp. They have a little character to them. So this is better than I, I mean, I honestly thought we'd have more distortion and more. I whatnot. wasn't sure how well it was going to do close up. I honestly was thinking. I especially thought the close up would be messed up. I thought the close up one would be the one that would be a little more messed up, but yeah, did pretty good. So mm -hmm. this one, I, yeah. We got the light leak again. What this is, <laughs> it's not grass. It's a it's a bunch of uh, cattails beside a boardwalk, and so I just took a picture of that. The wind was blowing a bit, not crazy but breezy, enough that it there was some motion going on there. But I actually don't mind it, and the color is pretty good, and it's just a little bit not as sharp as it would have been. The colors are, are very pretty. I mean, there's a usefulness for a photo like this. You could put text over it. You could, you know, I, I do. Stock see, photos right here. Right. I if you want this stock photo, let me know. I'll put it up on my portfolio thing. You can get it. There are things you could do. You could crop it. You could, yeah. Yeah. And, and there are a few blades that did focus in and it did capture it. So. Let's see. This one, definite light leak thing going here, but otherwise not too bad. Um, there was, there was, you know, we did have some haze going again this day and, you know, not bad. The sun was pretty intense. This was not like a pleasant light day. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you, you get that reflection came out actually pretty good. It was calm enough, I guess. Yeah. But I think the polarizer helped there, but yeah, the reflection of the, the reeds on the other side actually came out pretty good considering. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely you know what it is there's a clarity there it didn't just yeah blur out and this is the bridge again that is it's a pedestrian bridge goes over a creek and a wetland area there and connects the college to another part of the college campus we walk over it periodically when we're out and about um you know some light street going there we were here not too long ago this is by the way the yellow flower yeah flower is uh sweet clover it's like a it's it's taken over up here with all the rain this year, and it's it's kind of a 
obnoxious plant, but apparently horses and cows don't really have to eat it. They'll eat it if they have to, but it's kind of bitter. So it's just filling up all the pastures and everything and all the roadsides. But we were here a little bit ago and we saw, we threw like, is that a turtle in the lawn over there? Or, no, no, it's going to be a rock. No, it's a stick oh, or something. Yeah, right. Well, we, I didn't, we didn't want to bother just in case. So I did a photo. We got back looking at the zoomed in on the photo and it was a snapping turtle. Yeah. That it was, was up on the lawn. Big so. One. Yeah. And it, and I have heard they, they do sometimes go up into uh, drier areas to lay their eggs. So I was well, Hopefully this wasn't was a mama laying her eggs because the lawnmower might have been coming, but yeah, hopefully. Yeah. We haven't seen it since, but yeah. And this one is really bumming about. This one, as I said, was lightly moving around. This one's on the opposite side of the camera. I was not taking the picture upside down, honest. So <laughs> I don't know what happened here. This was just a hillside full of wildflowers and invasive weeds and what have you and we also this is right in the same area where i did a short about this little hollyhock and yes. my grandmother used to race hollyhocks loved the wood split, split rail fences so it reminded me of her so i had to film it so i tried to get this photo and unfortunately the uh um light thing happened but i don't know right you still get a, a, some good color and i think if the light leak wasn't there you, you'd have a stronger focus on that batch of queen anne's lace right there so I mean... So use your imagination. <laughs> your technique was good, dear. <laughs> uh, this one, not the most exciting photo, except for I was trying to get... We were almost done, and I was trying to finish up the roll. That's the roll... Uh, the roll. That's a flock of Canada geese. They're mostly, actually, goslings. I, I, I guess you call them that still. I don't know at what point they pass from gosling to mature goose, but they were all this year's babies except for a couple of adults and if you got up close to me you can kind of see the slight difference in size but these babies grow over the course of just a couple months they grow like from cute little fuzzy balls to like normal sized geese yep there it is out there feeding and they didn't seem to be bothered too much they were paying attention to us but we kind of scooted around by them and they just kind of Kept hanging out. One or two doing the neck thing. Yeah, yeah. As, as we were walking past, we're like, "You're on our sidewalk, dude," but they don't see it that way, so they get the neck thing going and kind of entertaining. Yeah. And final photo here: the lovely Melanie on the far end of the bridge. She was actually videoing me walking over the bridge for uh, um, a video we were doing. I don't think we've even published it yet. And crazy light leak on this one, which again makes me think it might have been the film that I messed up, possibly, <laughs> rather than the camera itself. Yeah, this makes me think it's a film. Um, but the rest of it actually, again, is not bad, other than the light leak. I mean, uh, there's a lot of dynamic range going on here, and I don't, I just don't think it looks bad for... Bottom, bottom line, all 36 of these pictures are better than I expected they were going to be, and I really thought half or more would be, like, out of focus or horribly underexposed or overexposed, so... I'm I'm kind of happy overall. Yeah, I, I thought it came out well. You can see the the I don't know, rivets or bolts in the framing of the bridge. You can yeah see the lights. I mean, even to the background of the clouds. I thought you know the definition is there. So. Yeah, some of them the sky is kind of a little blown out. Um, and this one you actually get all of it, so I'm that's pretty good. You get yeah near subjects, far subjects, all all. I, I thought uh, between lighting and focus came out pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there you have it. That's all 36 photos from the first. It actually worked I, I, better than I would have expected. Again, this is the Mamiya. What is the model to say? MSX 500. It's the 500 because one 500th of a second is the fastest shutter speed. They had a uh, MSX 1000 from the same year. They are same model era that had a one one thousandth of a shutter and it also had like a self timer a couple other minor features but here's the deal guy five dollars on ebay untested i thought i'll take a chance on a five dollar camera bless you <laughs> i don't think they heard you plus shipping <laughs> every time i say talking about my five dollar camera melanie reminds me of plus shipping it was like 20 bucks for shipping this thing's heavy it is heavy and it was still worth 25 bucks we've had fun with it. it's it's i don't know it must be at least two or three pounds i'd say right well maybe we'll weigh it for you for the next video yeah. but we are going to run another roll of film through here soon and send it out we did just recently i said we're on a roll 
of film through here. This did not take nearly so long. <laughs> Running 120 film through here. We get, we're supposed to get four pictures out of it. We got three. Ten bucks or something for a roll of film. It's cost me like 19 bucks, I think, to get it developed. That's not even for the high-res scans. So it's a little expensive. Plus six bucks and change to ship it. So that's a little expensive per picture. I watched a guy on YouTube once in a while. He's a photographer. He was 8x10 large format. He said his film was like 20 bucks a sheet per wow. one picture and then he has to get it developed and everything so wow. I shouldn't complain. We do have another roll of film for this so once we get it developed we're sure that the camera works. I think it does. It's very simple. We're gonna shoot another roll through it once we're sure it works. This one we have two more rolls on hand. We'll definitely shoot some more through it and we'll see with the next roll if it's a light leak on the camera or if I just mangled up that roll of film trying to extract it and recover it and everything. Hang in. We're going to give you a Lightroom version. I know it's kind of a long video. We went through 36 photos. I don't know what to say. Here, we're going to give you now the Lightroom edited version of these photos. And I promise you, information with Film Lab, people have been asking about this. We didn't know where to send them. I found a place out of Florida um, that so far I'm very happy with, uh, Reformed Film Lab. They have an app you put on your phone, and it's that simple. You can order it, pay for it. You get an order number, you can write it down or print off the order and stick it in there and mail it in, and they scan it. it everyone I looked at, scanning is actually more expensive than prints, but I don't want prints most of the time. So uh, I just want it scanned, then I can edit it and we share them on social media and our videos and things. So if I had prints, I'd still have to scan them myself. So I'm just getting them scanned. Their customer service has been top notch. They email me when the film arrives. I had an email video message from the owner. Uh, email me that the thing's done. And so I've been very happy with the customer service. Top notch. All right. So here's the edited versions of these film photos. <laughs> this is a film. Here are the edited versions of the photos. Hope you enjoy these. Let me know in the comments like which one you like best. And if you got a theory on the light leak thing and you got some experience with film, you've run into something like this before, whatever, let us know. Because uh, we're going to shoot another roll of film either way, but I'd love to nail this down and fix a problem if we can. But I'm looking forward to seeing some more film with us. Going through these this afternoon, it's been like Christmas. Honestly, you get the, all the stuff, then you have to take pictures. And then you finally get done and you get to send it out for developing and wait. And finally you get it back and download the zip file. And it's like, oh yeah, how many of these came out? And really, you know, better than we expected. So thanks for joining us for this video. We appreciate you tuning in and hanging in this long. And here goes uh, a play of all 36 after I've done a bit of editing to try and make them as good as I can reasonably get them without getting too carried away. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.